last week on the Punz Institute. Oh. 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 Here's looking at your kit. your revolutionary anti-aging drug. No, I just don't like cats. Have you found and stole your secret formula yet? No, but I think Slink might have something to do with it. Yes, there's something about her I just don't trust. <laughs> Slink. Good, you're here. What is it? There have been a series of mysterious fires. Do you know anything about them? No. You better watch your step. People are saying you're a lying, cheating fraud. I've heard it all before. Yeah, but that was just rehearsal. There you go, Marlin, sweetie. Where do you want me to put this? Why, Yora? No. Why? Because. When? Not now. Who? Not me. Well, Newt, I'm glad we sorted that out. I need two flamethrowers, three incendiary bombs, and 50 liters of napalm. Send them to the Punt Institute. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about? My mother's birthday. What is it? I've been looking at the list of ingredients in your latest stability cream. What is deoxyresonating microbesalamine? Nothing. It's just a made-up word that sounds scientific. I know, because I made them up. You make up your own goddamn words, you. No good make-up word stealer. <laughs> There has to be something in here. And when I find it, I'll put Slink away for good. until morning. Not as if I'm going to get kidnapped or anything. <gasps> oh, oh my God! You're smudging my lipstick. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> you dirty, stinking, rotten, two-time and tuner! Excuse me, does this come in a size 12? That designer doesn't go above a size 10. Is that so? Well, I won't bother them. And by the way, do you think you could wipe that ridiculous expression off your face? You look like you've got a broomstick stuck up your ass. <laughs> As a matter of fact, madam, I have. And I think you'll find I have very clean floors. Probably should get some ointment. Yeah. yeah. Look at this magnificent countryside. It's wonderful to be heading off once again to the charming little seaside village of West Pimple for the annual fat tasting festival. Oh, yes, I have very fond memories of West Pimple. It's where I had my first hawk. Don't forget that in a hurry. <laughs> oh, I dare say. 
Well, first off, we're going to visit Sir Rowley Pooley Pudding and his lovely wife, Marjorie Pooley Pudding, because, of course, they run the largest fat farm in Pimpleshire. Oh, excellent. Lovely. That's it, boy. Go on. Get around behind. First thing, every morning, I get up and I have to round up the fat for milking. You've got to milk the fat early, you see? And then it all goes to a huge fat vat, which we send off to the city. I say, that's a nice big fat you got there, Rowland. Yes, that's it, Well, my father was a fat farmer, and my father's father was a fat farmer. And his father, he was an accountant. But it hasn't always been easy, though, has it, Marjorie? Oh, no, no. Last year we had a terrible scare. Almost lost the entire herd to fat and mouth disease. Now, we were going to be calling up some lovely deep-fried battered fat for our hosts, Mary, Rowley and Marjorie. Unfortunately, they've all suffered massive heart attacks. Yes, so out of respect for their memories, we won't be eating anything for five minutes. <laughs> oh, dear, but I'd just grease this pub. Oh, well, waste not, want not. <laughs> Welcome to Beijing, only official approved government show for youth of China. My name is Chu Yang. I'm very proud to present a first Chinese showing of a clip from that fat, stupid, lazy girl, Madonna. She just had a baby, so you think I'm spoiled? You should see that little sucker. <laughs> Ruby Wax. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm so excited. How do I look? Is there lipstick on my teeth? Is there a, the guy who I'm about to interview behind this store is a huge star, even bigger than my ears. Can you get my ears? Can you get my ears? Can you imagine even bigger than that? Okay, I'm gonna knock on the door now. I'm knocking, I'm knocking. This guy has never done an interview. I'm knocking. Jesus! Jesus! Hello, my child. Oh, you open the door yourself. You don't have some little crippling person to do that for you, isn't that? Oh, their stairs come on. I would have a look at the whole condo. Can you see my ears? My ears are huge. Give my ears. Come on, slow pokes. Oh, this is, this is charming. No, really, it's fabulous. Can I just say, you look fabulous. You really, is that conditioner you use in your hair? Let me just say, this is so, so, so thrilling for you to be interviewed by me. Don't you think? This is nice. 
not. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. You're back, you're here. Second coming, rising from the dead, blah, blah, blah. 2,000 years, not even a phone call. Men, I tell you. Okay, I'm going to sit down here, I am, because I think we make a good couple, don't you? I think we look good, don't you? Okay, so you're the son of God. Was he like an overbearing father? You know, the whole Jewish thing, because my father, oh, please, don't start me. Look, now you're here. You can tell us the answer to the question we all want to know. Where do we go from here? Well, do we go for dinner? Do we have coffee? Or do the whole loaves and fishes thing? Because, you know, I would love to see that. Are you single? Oh, look, when I do that, you can't see you. You can just see me. Do you think my ass is fat? Look at my ass, Jesus. Do you think my ass is fat? Look, Clyde, do you think my ass is fat? Look at my ass. Mr. Mullick, can you tell us a little bit about One Notion? <laughs> Don't try your tricky, sneaky little questions on me. Because I represent the heartland of this country. I am the heartland. Everywhere I go, I meet people what say what I think. Right across this big brown land in all my life's travels, from the video shop to the 7-Eleven, from the fish and chip shop to the pizza hut, people are saying the same thing. Mullet, you wouldn't know ship from clay. And you know what that is? I will tell you why not. Because no one understands those seasonally adjusted figures. And because there will never be a level playing field until the Abos, Riginies, let us mine in Kakadu. What is what I think. This is Tracy Kellerman. Until recently, Tracy had a secure job with a bank and a great future ahead of her. Until she was caught in a devious scheme that would change her life forever. Well, I was looking through the employment section of the newspaper and I saw an ad which said, would you like to double your yearly income? And I thought, well, yes, I would. And so I talked it over with my boyfriend at the time and we both agreed that having twice as much money would be a good move for me financially. And what did you have to do? Nothing. Um, that's what I liked about it. They were going to do everything for me. <laughs> this is the room where they interviewed me. And they've since cleared the place of all the furniture? Uh, no, this is what it was like. Actually, that chair wasn't me. Tell us what happened. Well, these two guys with sunglasses came up to me and told me that I could make one million dollars. One million dollars? Before tax, yes. But first I had to pay them three thousand dollars. And did you? Well, how was I supposed to know that they were con men? <laughs> Um, about a week later, I got a call from the ombudsman to say that, um, they'd caught those two guys attempting to leave the country and for a small fee, I could have them investigated. What was that fee? Um, about $5,000. <laughs> what happened then? Well, it turned out that it wasn't a real ombudsman, it was the same two guys. How did that make you feel? Not great, actually. And did you ever think perhaps about calling the police? Well, fortune would have it that they came around the very next day. To take a statement? No, to take the stereo. <laughs> and it was the same two guys? Yes. Is there something you'd like to say to those two guys? Yes, um, you may have taken all my belongings, everything I own and my life savings, but you cannot take my dignity. Ms. Cullen, thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, Sorry, uh, how much do I owe you again? Uh, 500 for me, 300 for the cameraman. Oh, here you go. Thanks very much. Oh, hang on. You're not those same two guys. Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, you guys. Hello, people. Welcome to tonight's first rehearsal. I'm Robin Nevenish, Artistic Director of Potato Players of Burwood. Thank you. Bravo for making it through the gruelling audition process. Everyone got their Pablos? Let's begin. I'll do the big print. Train Spotting by Irvine Welsh. <laughs> the curtain rises ominously on a proscenium arch stage and five smackheads have just shot up. Oh, what a f great hit, <laughs> Nancy, your line. 
Yes, I'm aware of that, Robin. It's just that uh, I, I'm confused. I don't know whether I vomit and then say the line, or say the line and then vomit. Yes, that's a good point, Nancy. I think we'll workshop that. Okay, let's move on to the heroin suppository scene. Oh, oh, no! Go away! I'm not ready to have a cold turkey. <laughs> oh, I need blood. What's your journey at this stage, Shirley? <laughs> well, Robin, I'm lying in a fetal position, like so. When after I've taken a blast about, oh, Tuesday midday, then I wake up sometime on the Friday and I'm lying in a pool of my own vomit. <laughs> well, I'm terribly, terribly constipated and I've got to get to a chemist. I don't see that in the script. Oh, no, that's me, Robin. I was making mental note for later. Didn't I tell you? I've got chronic bowel troubles at the moment. Out of rocks. I'm dreadful. I'm a little uptight myself. All right, moving on. Very good. Yes, yes. Tell oh, me you want yes. it. Yes. Oh, all right, all right. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. You're driving well, baby. Baby, 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 yes. Yes. Ooh, Robin, yeah. question. While we're hard at it, do I know that she's only 15? Yes, explore it more. Oh, yes, Oh, hang yes. on my hip. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on, I've got my cravat caught around your cameo, dear. Oh, yes. I'll just spin back around there. I'll just spin back around. It's going well, isn't it? It's transporting a very lyrical piece. Reminds me of a piece I did something. Who took the last I'm sorry, Nancy. It's just the character. Seems to be taking me over. Such a professional, you see. Bad news, peoples. The show's off. I've just been informed there's no budget for costumes. Oh, no, Robin. It's... Hang on a minute, Robin. I just had a thought. I could bring in a pair of my old Fletcher jeans I've got in the cupboard. I could iron a seam into the front. Very modern. Great. Bevan? Well, I've got an old cravat with a hole in it. Inspired, Nancy. Robin, should I bring my Hello Dolly costume? Put a safety pin here. Very punky. Yes. Uh, should I bring a parasol? No. And Robin, I just had a thought. I've got some old syringes left over from Barry's diabetic episode. That'd be great props. Bravo, people. The show is back on. This is what theatre is all about. Bravo! Shocking. Truly shocking. In the sublime theatrical sense, my darlings, you did it! It was superb! Oh, Except Bevan. Where is he? Oh, I know, Robin. It was tragic. He died out there tonight. You're telling me he completely lost it. Where is he? No, Robin, he really did die out there tonight. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I was using his cravat as a tourniquet and oh, I forgot to take it off his neck. <laughs> Let us charge our glasses to the cruel mistress theatre and to Bevan, who died as he lived. What, Robin? With his cravat on. <laughs> Took us, darling. Took us to the cruel mistress of the theatre, Welcome to Global World News, I'm Anka Burson, and in our main bulletin today, a bloody clash between student demonstrators and army tanks. For the latest developments, we cross now to Simone Nunn, the wiser. Simone, where are you now? Well, Anka, I could be in Indonesia, or maybe even Cambodia, the Philippines, or possibly even Tiananmen Square, but almost certainly I'm somewhere in Southeast Asia, or maybe even Central America. Can you describe what is about to happen? Yes, well, we expect that a corrupt dictator will be ousted by a massive demonstration of people power. He will then be replaced with a corrupt dictator. How did this corrupt dictator rise to power initially? By replacing a corrupt dictator. And how is the international community expected to respond? 
Well, it will tolerate massive abuses of human rights as long as trade continues to flourish. But once the economy begins to flounder, there will be a sudden universal outbreak of moral righteousness. International banks will retrospectively claim that the economy was always rather shaky, followed by a demand for democratic reform, provided it doesn't go too far and interfere with the cheap manufacturing costs of running shoes. Is there any good news? Yes, you can still get great deals in Bali. Thank you, Simone. Although Fiji's good too. Thank you. Although, you know, personally, I do prefer New Mia. And we seem to have lost that satellite. Oh, I'm a jock man! I'm a jock man! <laughs> Because you're a little bit lower on in that department, mate. Oi, oh, we're boxers. You know, no one wants to cook lunch. <laughs> Let's kick things off. Now, the first issue of the men's magazine is waiting to go to print, and we still haven't come up with a name. Now, we need something that expresses our ideology and states who we are aiming the magazine at. Any ideas? Right. For understanding naturally brainy and gentlemanly snags. Or fun bags. Funny stuff. Yeah. Apropos vis a vis your fun bags, what about jugs? Jugs? What's that stamp for? Tits. Oh, oh, pretty oh. sophisticated stuff, as you know. I think we've hit the wall rename name of publication. Yeah, all right, fellas, let's just say name TBA. TBA? What's that stamp for, mate? Tits, bums, and arms. Oh, oh, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, all this chat about tits, it's just not PC, okay? Oh, oh I can't. Don't come over all politically correct on us, Steve. All right, can you get your brains out of your pants for five minutes? What else have we got? Politics? Yeah, yeah sure, mate. Oh, I've got that covered. I've done a piece analysing the Middle East crisis. We delve into the leader of the PLO, titled Kraken and Arafat. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and I've done an article on uh, huge melons. <laughs> yeah. Fancy, what did I just say? <laughs> nah, mate, it's an article about genetic engineering in the fruit industry. Or... <laughs> mate, that sounds boring. Yeah, but I've got a great picture of Emma's North. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've got a vasectomy story with heaps of full colour photos. Oh, please, that might be buff. What did you just say? Don't make me bath. Bath! That is the name of the magazine. Bath! <laughs> Bronze Dozzy Renaissance Fella! Oh, that is it! it. <laughs> I'll just turn this thing on. Oh, excuse my breath. I've just had some cabana in a stubby. Hello, kids. It's Nana Wander up the Gold Coast. Say hello to Nan's new de facto, Barry, at the bloody pool pump again. Barry the bum crack, that's what we call him, because that's all you see of him from October to March. <laughs> Barry, Barry, would you like some cabana? Here, I'll chuck it over. <laughs> Who's that? Yes, kids, I met Barry when I moved up here. First night I arrived, I popped into the communal spa, and lo and behold, there I was, face to face with my future de facto. Well, face to bum crack, as Barry was busy fixing a dicky jacuzzi valve at the time. <laughs> well, we got talking right through to tea time. He had a dry biscuit, I had a couple of cocktail onions. We decided to make a night of it. Haven't been apart since. Excepting the time Don Derry had a swingers pool party out here. We all had to throw our dentures into the pool and you went home with whose ever teeth you picked up. <laughs> I can't tell a lie, I was a little disappointed when I picked up Audrey McIntyre's teeth. But I'll try anything once I'm that top of a lady. <laughs> oh, the night really went off. It ended up with Don Derry floating starkers in the pool. Oh, we laughed. Well, it turns out he'd had a heart attack. Oh, that doesn't sound funny now, but at the time before the ambulance came, it was a scream, laugh. I nearly wet my pants. Well, I did, actually. I had medical problems now. Well, that's all from then. I've wandered to the kid. A oh, berry. Your crack's looking a bit red. Oh, do you want me to rub some cream in? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and welcome to this, the final in a series of lectures on bringing up happy, healthy children. So far in the series, we've heard from Chris Green on toddler taming, Stephen Biddle on bringing up boys, and tonight we present a rather controversial guest. Here she is, stay-at-home mother of four, Penny Osmond. Another. I thought we were going to get an expert. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Hi, Penny. Mm -hmm. um, look, I had a totally natural childbirth, which completely destroyed all my inner organs, but I'm just so proud of myself. Uh, I breastfed my son until he was 10 years old. We go to Jimbaroo Suzuki music lessons, leaping lizards. Um, we never allow sweets in our house. In fact, my son doesn't even know what sugar is. And I just want to know, what do you think of me? 
I think you're a dickhead. Moving on. <laughs> Excuse me, Penny. Um, I have noticed that when my son drinks red cordial, he becomes quite uncontrollable, screams a lot, jumps all over the furniture. I was just wondering what you think I should do. Don't give him red cordial. <laughs> um, yeah, but Penny, isn't there a book I could read on this or could I go to a specialist or could you recommend a cordiologist or something? <laughs> I think I've answered really... your question. Please give somebody else a go. Yep. Yeah, uh, John from Yarraville. I work eight hours a day uh, <laughs> away from the home. I also uh, clean up after the kids, do all the cooking, washing and ironing. Uh, my gripe is that my wife won't let me do more. <laughs> that does sound like a problem, John. I'd like to talk about this further. Maybe tonight. <laughs> I know a little place down the road, they do a beautiful snitchel. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll cook, all right? Oh, you're on. Hi, um, I'm Mary Trumbull. I also am a mum of four. I have James, he's 10 and he is gifted. I've got Amy, she's six, she's accelerated. I've got Toby, four, he's um, extended. And my 16 month old Kane is able. <laughs> Just out of interest, Mary, what do you do? I'm a chronic exaggerator with the tax department, Penny. <laughs>